Hi guys, welcome to Simproved. Fresh speaking here and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. Today we are going to build this lovely bookshop that I actually started building a little bit for myself, for my own gameplay. I had like this whole dark academia storyline about it that uh, I have a bookshop keeper and there will be magical you know, books in there and maybe also magical plants and she sells them and there are also some secrets etc because she inherited the bookshop or something like that with some cool neighbors all in one house and you know I just wanted to share my little journey here with this build. This took quite long because I kind of built it for myself and therefore I made lots and lots of different changes throughout the building process. Because I was like, yeah, I don't like that. Maybe for, you know, someone else. But <laughs> yeah, I, I'm always a little bit more stricter with the looks, etc. Et for my own buildings. So I really hope that you're going to like this. It will look absolutely fantastic on the inside. And of course, the book nook kit that came out was the main inspiration. Because now with the book nook kit, you can finally have like real walls covered in bookcases. And of course, I wanted to have like huge walls all around so uh, yeah this is basically this whole thing it will be a little bit more you know dark academia a little bit you know maybe Hogwarts kind of thing or stuff like that so lots of wood and plants and books and it's kind of like a little bit witchy and odd and quirky so something around those lines so the exterior I built in Brightchester because I wanted this to be kind of inspired by this renaissance baroque crossover house and i also needed some apartments in there to have different sims all living there on this one lot so i can control them as their neighbors and so we're gonna copy a little bit of the brightchester architecture that you can see around and also i wanted to have this fitting into Brightchester, so that's why there is, um, of course, the Souterrain, Souter Souterrain, <laughs> Souterrain little apartments. So these are really, really small and I wanted to have two tiny apartments down under in case I need more people living there during gameplay. I always think it's better that way and I will later then during gameplay lock the doors for the typical, you know, for the tenants and unlock them for the real tenants of the apartments, etc. Um, so that they also sleep in the correct beds and use the right bathrooms, etc. <laughs> so that's the main idea about this. And I try to decorate this heavily. First, I wanted to go with lots of white frames and borders and trims because that's what some of the houses around looked like. I personally didn't like that in the end. I was like too contrasty. So later on I will change all of the colors to a little bit more light brown etc. So it's not so crass. But that's just my personal preference. I see that a lot of people use the very white trims. But sometimes on these very old timey buildings I just want them to have kind of like a darker features, you know, so um, except not using black that much, but maybe just darker browns, etc. So uh, that will happen. <laughs> and of course, the book storefront is also the front to the to the street here because I wanted the end of the hill street that you can see there being the ones where the apartment entries are, like the doorways to the to the apartments and the book front on this side front. I didn't want to do diagonal because diagonals are always a little bit more tricky later when it comes to furnishing, also applying windows and doors for example, because windows and doors some stretch to the diagonal, some keep the you know same width and um, it's always very frustrating in my opinion. <laughs> so um, I try not to use that many diagonals honestly. So yeah, that was basically in my opinion the best lot to place it in. Also if you have the Discover University pack which has the Brightchester world, this is the lot that has the little water access to it on the back so your sims can swim in the canal. I just thought that's kind of cute and I wanted to try that out as well. This rendering kind of like one of the better 
lots in Brightchester because some lots are way too small and yeah the surroundings are a little bit odd to me but maybe I will during my gameplay of course maybe add some more buildings etc that I may need. I was already thinking of doing of course the library in Brightchester now that we have the book no kit. Um, but yeah, stuff like that. So I will of course then record these and show you as well. But yeah, this is ma mainly, you know, a little bit more out there, I guess. <laughs> it's not your modern LA multimillionaire villa. I really wanted to have something quirky and kind of fun and very detailed with lots of, you know, books and plants and something where the house definitely looks a little bit odd. So this is definitely architectural wise, maybe not that realistic realistic if you know what I mean but uh, that was also the purpose of it because it has to be a little bit odd it's the main character for sure <laughs> but I also wanted it to be you know kind of witchy and like, just an odd building with like odd peculiar tenants in there so I really hope that you like this in my opinion it fits really really well the spot that I chose to build this on and it will have three stories on upper ground and one story in the basement section for the Sutra apartments. And yeah, I just gonna uh, go into the interior here. So I first did the whole interior, you know, build wise. I did myself because I had to play test a lot here. Also with the spandrels, the railings, etc. to find all of the right <laughs> wooden swatches and also kind of everything fitting together. So this is the bookshop itself has two stories. It will have a large gallery basically and you know with a with the stairs leading onto it and also upstairs there will be a secret doorway to the apartment of the shopkeeper so to speak and also there is a ladder that's supposed to be one of these big library ladders um, but that also lets her access the apartment itself as well so uh, yeah everything is working fine i play tested this for i think six hours and lots and lots of stuff came up that i had to add again garbage bins for example had to move lots of stuff so that your sims can really move around in here so this is heavily play tested and i'm very confident that this will work totally fine it's up on the sims 4 gallery the link will be in there as well and the tray file will be on my patreon for those who want to have the tray files so basically what you can see already i have placed lots and lots of the book note kits bookcases everywhere they are wall mounted so it's really easy to uh, place them i had some issues with b them being modular so sometimes when you add something you misclick it's especially if you have the move objects cheat on it gets fiddly sometimes it wants to move the whole bookcase wall sometimes it doesn't it's hard to fiddle around but i think this is just the typical thing do you really want it to be modular and kind of responsive or do you want us to place everything individually i think the way how it is it's okay you know <laughs> i could have just undo the move objects sheet and then go in there again I made it work and I wanted to have this really cool bar kind of thing as the counter because I just think it looks so so cute. I don't know from which pack that is, I'm just going to assume it's hand for it on Bagley so cottage living but I'm not sure so don't take this with a grain of salt and I needed some more slots to put stuff in there so I put some tables in there. <laughs> These are standing tables you know bar tables and uh, I could hide them easily in there but this gave me more slots and a little bit more freedom to play stuff also later in gameplay this is the thing with the red shelf that lots of simmers use that later in gameplay you can't you know adjust them properly again if you want to play something and stuff so I don't use the red shelf that much or the red shelf trick and I found that the cats and dogs, I think it's from the cats and dogs pack. It's a suitcase with lots and lots of books on it. And they fit exactly into one bookcase slot. 
you can move them up in there. Yeah, I will use that heavily here because I think it looks just so cute to have like little suitcases in there and I really want this to look super messy. My whole idea about the gameplay was is that some sim is like inheriting this from their aunt and uncle, you know, that kind of stuff, and have to bring this bookshop back on track. But also there are of course some hidden magical items in there and she reveals, I don't know, the whole history about their legacy of the family or something like that, you know. I just wanted to play something like that and kind of see what happens if you do this in The Sims. And it's doing good so far. Uh, of course I haven't sold any books because I haven't set this to retail by the way, this is a residential. You can easily set this to retail by the way and put just, if you have the get to work pack, a cash register in there on the on the counter of course but i personally find that the get to work retail is very odd gameplay um yeah it's not how i wanted to play this so i set this to residential kind of pretend a little bit more and do like <laughs> other stuff and yeah, basically I wanted this to be also very green. Like later on I was like, hey, this is lots of books. I used all of the books from all of the packs, all of the book kind of related stuff. I used Journey to Batuu lamps and Journey to Batuu kind of artifacts because they look kind of witchy. Which is why I love Journey to Batuu, by the way, because if you are into this quirky kind of magical stuff, there is great stuff in the Star Wars pack. Who would have thought? <laughs> but yeah, it definitely fits. And I want to have lots and lots of plants all around. It was like Hufflepuff common room all coming together now. <laughs> My dreams coming true. But yeah, plants and books in this dark academia kind of setting. I just thought this is my absolute favorite bookshop ever. I was very, very happy how it was coming together with the plants was like a great decision. It may not be super practical, but you know, it, it looks really, really cool. And then I had another apartment on the other side. So my idea was that of course there is like this grumpy, dark, mysterious neighbor living on the other side in the house and they kind of uh, maybe a writer or something like that. And therefore they have to interact a little bit and get to know each other and, uh, you know, start a family, something like that. Or maybe it's complicated. It's going to be complicated for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I wanted to have this kind of Victorian Gilded Age kind of interior. You know, it's kind of very made up. It's all like a out of the place with uh, decades, of course. But that's the whole point, because my Sims will, of course, have like a phone and always that on their phone and stuff like that, because that's just without mods, not possible to undo. But uh, yeah, I wanted this to be kind of like a mixture of steampunk, dark academia, Bridgerton fan fiction storyline. <laughs> so there you go. This is what I'm going to do. So this is the neighbor's apartment. You can of course use it also for your shopkeeper, but the shopkeeper has the best view because they're living in the attic. And of course there's a little office kind of space. There's another bedroom, like a main bedroom in the apartment. And then I had a small little other room, which is maybe for the warden. Do you say that's like this? That they maybe get like a nephew or a niece or something living with them? And maybe they can also bond by raising the child or something. I don't know. Um, or it's just for the butler. I don't know. You know, stuff like that. I just thought it's going to be cute to have like a little tiny little bedroom. Also, everything's fine. We have, I've play tested this so much, guys, because I really wanted this to be a really cool build to just, you know, dive in right away and kind of explore a little bit. Also, of course, this video, as you can see, is heavily edited because this took me pff, 60 hours or so because I really took my time and I really like tested this, then I added stuff, then I, yeah, I read it a lot. So I had to heavily cut this video. It wouldn't have made any sense. But as always, there will be a video tour at the end so you can have a better look at everything. Can I get like a feeling of what this build is about? And of course, it would be also interesting for me to hear your ideas about what you could play in there and like what the storyline is, because I'm not so good at gameplay. I really realize that. 
So if you have any tips about the bookkeeper or like shopkeeping, how they would earn money and stuff, so I don't have to worry about them not having any money issues, and bill issues, stuff like that. That would just be interesting. So now we are in the best apartment, which is the attic. So the attic is for the shopkeeper. By the way, I chose lots and lots of colors and like objects that I personally find super cute. I, you know, like I said, this is more like for my own gameplay and like my own taste. So if this is your own taste as well in The Sims 4, go for it. We are on the same, you know, wavelengths kind of. So yeah, one is like the bedroom, there's a small little bathroom. By the way, there are lots of bathrooms because I always uh, have struggles with Sims peeing themselves and like the hygiene. So there's a bathroom on every level. I think it's in total like six bathrooms or something. And bathrooms are not that much of a... for that time period, but we need them of course for the Sims, etc. So uh, I always want them to have around. So we have a little cat bed or like a, for a small dog and I thought maybe they are sleeping in front of the little fireplace there. I just thought that's so cute, having like a black cat or something. And basically I will use again lots of plants. There are glass roofs on top small little glass roofs so you can have your plants in there for it to make sense also you get crazy good lighting with glass roofs you will see in the video tour what I mean of course some of the objects are very modern ish but uh, since this is kind of like a very different multiverse timeline kind of thing I thought I, I I want them, so I need them. I, I'm gonna put them in there. So sometimes they don't make sense, you know. Um, just like the exterior is like a mixture of Renaissance canal, Dutch canal house, and Baroque sides of like a Baroque, more Baroque house, apartment house. So we have lots and lots of stuff going on in here. <laughs> But yeah, I really hope that you're gonna like it. And then I was like, okay, we have like a living room. I wanted to have this grand living room, but then realized, oh, she doesn't have a kitchen. Oh, my shopkeeper needs a kitchen. And um, you can easily use the bookcases as well, kind of like uh, your kitchen. Yeah, cabinets is the word. And kind of mix them with other stuff from other kitchens, you know. And I thought that looks very, very cute. We can definitely use that. The more books, the better. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to mix them in there as well. And I play test it, so uh, one of the counters will be free as well, so they can prepare food actually, which is definitely something that I didn't realize you have to do on a regular basis, that you need like open counter space sometimes, because I don't play test that much sometimes, you know, and if I just do a toast or I don't know, microwave something, they don't need the counter, so I don't realize during blade testing, or oh, sometimes they need a counter to prepare the food on the counter. They apparently don't take tables for that. I thought the table would be okay as well, but okay, apparently not. In the living room, you also have the access to the balcony which has a beautiful view, lots of plants again. There are two planters, so you can use them. I think I put Valerian Root and a Mandrake in there, if you have the Realm of Magic pack, and also a gramophone, because I wanted my Sim to knit or cross-stitch on the armchair there and listen to classical music. <laughs> and uh, in the interior, there will be... Yeah, like I said, the kitchen, a little table, and a sofa later on because the planters didn't work inside, apparently. And there is the tree with the birds on it because I wanted to have lots of birds flying around and it works fine. So yeah, that is the whole build, guys. Here are the shots for those who want to rebuild this themselves. So we have the attic apartment, then the bookshop has two levels and the dark mysterious neighbor apartment. And downstairs are two small little apartments for either servants or the funny sidekick. I don't know yet, but yeah, you can use them as well to your own pleasure. And that's basically it, guys. I really, really hope you like this build. Leave a comment down below what kind of gameplay you would do in a build like this. And really hope you like it. And I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.